Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, when the crowds were increasing, Jesus began to say, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign shall be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah became a sign to the men of Nineveh, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will arise at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will arise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The Gospel of the Lord. As I was reading this gospel, and I was reading the words, when the crowds were increasing, I just happened to look up and see that today there are more people coming to SSVP than I have noticed in some time. The increase of the crowds. More and more people during a pandemic will want to seek out solace. And right here in our parish and in, in Kabonga, you are continuing the great tradition you started many years ago. It's now must be in its thousands of people who have come seeking solace because of your generosity of time and materials. So we have this desire of people to get very close to Jesus as we have in a pandemic, people wanting to come together with a great need. And they're looking for something in the, in the, in the scriptures. They're looking for a sign. As we are looking for a sign in this pandemic, we were looking for a sign of hope. The numbers are now down. That's a good sign. But there might be a third way, more than likely there will be, so we've got to look very carefully for that sign. And Jesus was showing in the gospel, look how many people are looking for signs. He said, even the queen of Sheba, who was not even a Jew, came from far looking for a sign. Everybody's looking for a sign. And yet the sign was right in front of them. Jesus. And he mentions the sign of Jonah. And the great important thing about Jonah, I love Jonah's story because it's not in the part of the reading we read today, but in the beginning he ran away. In a sense he duck dived. Oh yeah, I had to do that this morning. Not very well. I got dumped, but anyway. To duck dive means you try and learn a technique to avoid something, hoping that something better will be there in the future. Well, poor old Jonah did duck dive, but he got right into the belly of a whale. And then he learned to ride the real wave when he went into Nineveh. The real wave of God's mercy working through him. I wonder how often I have duck-dived in my spiritual life, only to wake up on the other side to realize that if I learn to face the next wave of crisis, danger, fear, that I might be able to stand up on the board of faith and ride the wave.
I heard a saying that said, so often we communi communicate more than we listen. And if only we realize just how often God is communicating with us, then maybe if we compared that with how often we are ready to listen to God's communication, there would be so many miracles we would not be able to contain our joy. God speaks to us more than we listen to him. That's my own personal conviction. And the times when I feel I want to communicate, it is often my ego and my arrogance and my pride that is leading me to speak. Have you noticed how preaching is a thing I love to do? Why? Because everybody is submissive and listening. And I've wondered why, what is it that this microphone does to my psyche? And it's amazing that you give a child a microphone and they love it because it makes their voice heard. And the challenge for all of us is to make sure that when we do speak, we're not speaking what we need to communicate but what God wants to communicate. And that's a challenge certainly for, for all people who use microphones because it is a very attractive thing to feel proud and arrogant. But it can be a very satanic thing if I'm using my pride and arrogance to use this to tell you what I want you to hear and not what God wants to hear. So for all of us, we all have an audience that listen to us, children, spouses, friends. It's like having a microphone. But are we going to communicate our message or God's message? Jonah ran away because he didn't feel he had a message. We all have a message. When you put our pride and our arrogance and all our other stuff behind and allow that voice of God to come up, which we can only really do when we know that voice and go into a risky area with that voice of love and forgiveness. These are all the things that show us it's the right thing. The love, forgiveness, honesty, openness, humility. As the psalm says, a broken and humbled heart you will not spurn. Why? Because that is, the, that is the voice in the heart that speaks the greatest truth. A humbled, broken-hearted person speaks truth like no one else can. Speak to somebody who's lost a child, who's gone through a divorce, who's lost a spouse. These are the brokenhearted. They speak wisdom beyond any other eloquent person. Why? Because they're allowing God to come through. Let us not get into the habit of duck diving too often, but to face whatever is there with God. Because through these experiences, he is communicating to us. And it's better for us to listen than to talk. Amen.